Hey guys, in this tutorial series I'm going to show you how to implement your own singly linked list in C Sharp. As a programmer you'll need to know how to implement this singly linked list especially if you're going to be taking computer science classes. Let's start out by creating a new console application in Microsoft Visual Studio. So let's open that up, go to new project, make sure console application is selected and I'm going to name this linked list tutorial and just go ahead and hit OK. This will create your new project. Now say you wanted to store a list of strings and how would you do that in C Sharp? You would normally use the list class and specify string and make a new list of strings. Now you could take that list and you could add say hello. We're going to show how to implement a a certain type of list, again called a singly linked list, that works just like this. In this first video I'm going to show you the classes you'll need to make. There's going to be two of them and what we're going to implement in each of the two classes. I won't be writing any code in these but I will be going over the outline of the classes you need to make. So the first thing we're going to do is make a new class called Node. So right click on your on your project, go down to New class and we're going to call this node. This class will hold the data that we want to store in the list and also hold a reference to the next node in the list. Also for now in this implementation we're just going to store an object but towards the end of this tutorial we con will convert this linked list into a generic linked list and that's basically where you need to specify the type of item that you're going to store. So right here list if you specified int that's we would have to do that in our linked list and that's going to be towards the end of the tutorial. The next class we're going to have to make is called linked list. This is the class you're going to use when you want to create a new list in your own project just like I created that list class. So the first thing we're going to do is start by outlining the node class. So the first thing we're going to need is a constructor and I'm going to put little check boxes by this. So the one constructor that we'll need for this implementation is going to take an object, which is the data, and a node, which is a reference to the next node in the list. And that's the only constructor we'll need. Next there will be some private fields. And the first one will be named data. And this is going to contain the data of the node and it's basically what we want to store in the list. Yeah, there we go. And the next private field we'll need is going to be called next, and that's also going to be a node. I should put the object object right there. And this will be a node called next, and this is basically a reference to the next node in the list. And these are the only private fields we're going to need. And then we're going to need some public properties. Basically, these are going to be getters and setters oops, for um, these private fields. So what we're going to need is data. Actually, I'll capitalize that. And that's just going to get and set the data field. And we'll go over that when we get there. And this one's going to be called next. And that's just going to get and set the next field. This is actually all the implementation details that we need for the node class. So let's go ahead and start outlining the linked list class now. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to want to start out with the constructor. In the constructor, we are just going to have a zero parameter constructor, basically the default, but it's not going to be the default because we're going to initialize the private fields that this class is going to have. So it's going to be linked list like that and it just basically initializes initializes the private fields. That's it for that. So the private fields that we're gonna have are gonna be a node and it's gonna be called head. And what this is is a reference to the first node in the list. That is because this list is a linear list so 
each one will be tied to the next. Say we have a list of A, A, B, C, that's not a C, <laughs> C, D. Each one will be tied to the next one. There won't be a reference to what's before it in the list, but that's how it's basically made up right there. And the next private field we will have is going to be called, it's an int, and it's going to be called size. And this is just going to be the current size of the list. So basically how many items are in the list. Next, we're going to be doing the public properties. So I'll just put public properties. We're going to want, I keep forgetting to do this. Sorry, guys. The first public property you want is going to be called empty, and this is basically going to return a true or false, but if the list is empty. That'll be useful for writing some of the methods later on. The next one's going to be called count, and this is just going to be basically returning the size private field. It's how many items are in the list. And the last one is kind of a property, it's called the indexer and it's just basically going to allow you to access the data like an array. So you know how you can, if you had an int array, say A, you could access that data like A sub 1 and you could get the first element, or actually the second, but in, at index 1 you could get whatever that is. So that's we're going to allow that functionality in our list. And we're going to add seven methods. So methods that we need to add are, the first two are the same but overloaded. So this is going to be add. And what this one's going to take is an int index, an object, we'll just call it O for now. What this is going to do is add an item to the list in, in, at the index, at the specified index. And the next one is going to be add, but it's just going to take an object, and we'll call that O again. And this will add an item to the end of the list. So if they don't specify where to put it in the list, we'll just tack it on to the end. The next method is going to be called remove. And that's going to take an int index. And basically what this will do is remove the item in the list at the specified, I spelled that wrong, index. The next one's going to be clear. And this is just taking no parameters, it's going to clear the list. And as you'll see, this is the easiest method to write out of all of them when we get to implementing it. It doesn't take very much. Um, the next two are semi-related, at least the implementation of them. We have index of which will take an int index, not, I'm <laughs> just kidding, it'll take an object, <laughs> oh, and what it'll do is gets the index of the item in the list. And if it's not in the list, it'll return negative one, stating that the item's not in the list. The next one's called contains, and it'll take the object, oh, again. And it basically returns true or false if the list contains that object. And the last method is going to be called get. And what this will do is take an int index and it will return the item. It'll get the item at the specified index. So that is actually the completed outline for both classes. In the next video, we'll implement all the code for the Node class. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more. And we'll see you in the next tutorial.